Howdy howdy, my name is Lily from Makecraft Game, and you're listening to Reading Rulebooks. Today, we're gonna go over the rulebook for Ahoy, and I'm doing something a little bit different. At the end of the rulebook reading, I'm gonna bring in a guest to go over the ins and outs of Ahoy, because I have not played it that much, and I know that they have. So, without further ado, let's get into the rulebook first, and we'll get into the commentary later. Overview. In Ahoy, you play as one of four swashbuckling factions seeking fame on the high seas. The Bluefin Squadron has roamed these waters for decades, enforcing order with shot and sword. Each round, they gain fame by controlling regions, basically by having the most pieces on them. The Mollusk Union, driven long ago into the deep, now rises from the sea to reclaim their ancestral home. Just like the Bluefin Squadron, they gain fame each round by controlling regions. The two smugglers run blockades to bring luxuries and essentials to those with the most need, or the most coin. They gain fame by delivering cargo cards, though this also increases the wealth of regions, making them worth more fame for the squadron and union to control. The game ends at the end of a round if any player has at least 30 fame. The winner is the player with the most fame. If you're familiar with board game genres, the Bluefin Squadron and Mollusk Union are playing an area control game, and the Smugglers are playing a pickup and deliver game. Components 4 pocket guides, 12 region tiles, 4 player boards, 1 per faction, with overview and setup on back. Figures 4 flagship figures, 1 per faction, 10 patrol figures, 3 stronghold figures, 1 cutter figure, and 1 gunship figure. Dice 17 action dice, 5 for the Bluefin Squadron four for each other player. Action dice are referred to simply as dice in the rules. 11 wealth dice, two battle dice. Cards, 30 market cards, 12 plan cards, one first player card, end of round aid on back, two bluefin squadron aid cards, one patrol, one stronghold, two smuggler aid cards, one per smuggler. Tokens and markers, 25 damage tokens, 20 gold tokens, 20 comrade tokens, to make the comrade tokens, you'll need to put the 20 included stickers on the 20 yellow wooden discs. One fame track, set up aid on back. Four fame markers, one per faction. Four pledge markers, two per smuggler. Four reward markers, two per smuggler. Game setup. One, collect shared pieces. Collect the 20 gold tokens, 25 damage tokens, 11 wealth dice, and two battle dice nearby. Two, choose factions. Each player chooses a faction to play. The faction you play can depend on the number of players. Two players play with the Bluefin Squadron and Mollusk Union. Three players play with the Bluefin Squadron, a Smuggler, and the Mollusk Union. Four players play with all four factions. Seat players. Players must sit in this clockwise order. Bluefin Squadron, Smuggler, three and four players. Mollusk Union, Smuggler, four players only. Each player places the player board for their faction in front of themselves. The two smugglers are identical. If the smugglers disagree about who sits in the second and fourth seat, determine it randomly. 4. Prepare region stack. Shuffle the 12 region tiles, return one face down to the box, and place the remaining 11 region tiles in a face down stack nearby. 5. Set up map. Draw and deal two region tiles randomly and face up to the table. Place them so only one space of each region touches the other region, and so their two islands are opposite and as far away from each other as possible. Each region tile is a 2x2 two two grid of four spaces, one of which is an island. 6. Place wealth dice. Place a wealth die with a value of 1 on the center of each face up region tile. 7. Prepare market. If you're playing with two or three players, return one random market of each suit shown in the top left corner from the deck of 30 market cards to the box. There are six suits. It's okay to see which cards get removed. Just shuffle the market deck, flip over cards until you find one of each suit, return them to the box, then reshuffle the market deck. 8. Deal market. Shuffle the market cards into a deck and deal three market cards to a face-up market row. 9. Mark Fame Track. Place the Fame Track nearby and place the Fame Marker for each player on the zero Fame space. After this, set up the factions as described both on page 6 and on the backs of the player boards. 
return the pieces of all unchosen factions to the box. An example table setup for three players can be found on page 5 of the rulebook. Faction Setup It's fine if all the factions set up at the same time, but you can follow the strict order if the smugglers really care about seeing how the other factions set up. 1. Roll Action Dice The Bluefin Squadron takes and rolls the five action dice of their color. Each other player takes and rolls the four action dice of their color. 2. Take Gold each player takes one gold. 3. Set up Bluefin Squadron. Do this. A. Take your 10 patrol figures and 3 stronghold figures. B. Take your patrol aid card, stronghold aid card, and the first player card. You may place the figures on their aid cards if you want. C. Place both your flagship figure and one patrol figure on the island on either region tile. Each region has one island. 4. Set up First Smuggler. In games with three or four players, do this. D. Place your flagship figure on any space on the map except an island. E. Take your smuggler aid card and your two pledge markers with their squadron and union icons face down. You may look at them. F. Place your black and white reward markers on the middle space of the reward grid on your player board. You can stack them. 5. Set up Mollusk Union. Do this. G. Take your cutter figure, gunship figure, and 20 comrade tokens. H. Place your flagship figure and two comrade tokens on the empty island. I. Shuffle your 12 plan cards into a plan deck and draw two plan cards into your hand, keeping them secret from other players. J. Place six comrade tokens on the ready comrade section of your player board. 6. Set up second smuggler. In games with four players, set up the second smuggler in the same way as the first smuggler. Time to set sail. Begin play starting with the Bluefin Squadron. An example of faction setup can be found on page 7 of the rulebook. Playing the game. Ahoy is played over a series of rounds until someone wins at the end of a round. In a round, players take one turn at a time starting with the first player. On the first round, the Bluefin Squadron takes the first turn. On your turn, you can take various actions. Most of the time, you take an action by placing an action die onto the die slot of your player board. A few actions don't require placing an action die, such as recruiting crew and handling cargo. To start out the game, each player rolled their faction's set of action dice during setup. Going forward, Everyone will re-roll all of their action dice at the end of each round. In total, you must place two action dice on your turn. No more and no less. On their final turn of the round, though, the Bluefin Squadron places only one action die. In the rare situation that you cannot place a die, set it aside. You cannot place it in this round. The Bluefin Squadron will take a total of three turns to place their five action dice. Each other player will take a total of two turns to place their four action dice. Take actions one at a time. You must complete your action before taking another one. Example. You place a die on your full sail action and resolve it. Then you place a die on your tailwind action and resolve it. After taking a couple actions that don't require placing a die, you end your turn. When you decide that you're done acting, your turn ends. The next player in clockwise order, who has any action dice left to place, begins their turn. If everyone already placed all of their action dice, the round ends. From now on, the action dice are just called dice, since they are used very often. Ending the round. When the round ends, score fame from controlled regions and then clean up. Score regions. Check every region for control. Only the Bluefin Squadron or Mollusk Union can control a region, based on which faction has the higher control calculated as following. Bluefin Squadron, plus one control per patrol, plus two control per stronghold, plus two control for their flagship. Mollusk Union, plus one control per comrade on the region's island, plus one control per union ship. The controller gains fame equal to the region's wealth die. 
Every region has a wealth die on the center of its tile. They start at one, but can increase as the game progresses. On a tie for control of a region, no one scores fame for it. Example, you check this region tile for control. The squadron has plus two from their flagship and plus two for two patrols. The union has plus two for two comrades on the island and plus one for their flagship for a total of three control. The squadron scores one fame here because this region's wealth die is a one. Most pieces show their control with their number of flags. For example, the squadron flagship adds plus two and has two flags. The smuggler's flagships don't affect control in any way. Clean up. Do these steps in the following order. 1. End game. If any player has at least 30 fame, end the game. Smugglers score pledged cargo, which we'll talk about later, then the player with the most fame wins. On a tie, the tied player with the most gold wins. 2. Adjust for 2. With two players, the first player must increase one region's wealth die by one, then return all cards in the market to the box. Refill it. With three or four players, a region's wealth will increase whenever a smuggler delivers cargo. Three, reroll dice. Each player rolls all of their action dice and places them nearby. Four, pass first player. Give the first player card to the next clockwise player. When you're done cleaning up, begin the next round, starting with the new first player. Taking action. On your turn, you must take two actions that require placing a die. To do so, place a die on the action's die slot. Most of them are on your player board, but you may gain more from crew, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You can also take any number of actions that do not require a die, such as recruiting crew. The die slot must be empty. It cannot be filled with a die or damage token. Once you place a die, it stays placed until the end of the round. Some die slots only accept dice of a certain value. A slot with no icon accepts any die. A slot with a die value only accepts that exact value. A slot that says even only accepts an even number, two, four, or six. You may spend gold to modify your die. When placing a die, you may spend any number of gold tokens to increase or decrease the die's value by one per gold you spend. Common actions. Every faction has these actions on their player board with some differences that you'll learn about later. Sail. Move your flagship one or two spaces. Each move goes to an adjacent space, not diagonal. Tailwind. You may move your flagship directly to any space on the map with a printed die in the corner whose value matches the die you placed on the Tailwind die slot. This space does not have to be adjacent, and you ignore everything between the starting and ending space. Tailwind basically lets you teleport around the map. Cannons. Your figures have loaded cannons from now until the end of the round. Whenever you move one of your figures into a space with enemy figures, you must battle them if either of you has loaded cannons. Repair. Remove up to two damage tokens for any of your die slots. Moving. Many actions let you move your flagship. For example, every faction can sail, which lets you move your flagship one or two spaces. A few actions let you move other figures. You may only move to an adjacent space. One space up, down, left, or right from your space, not diagonal. If you're on the map edge, you can move off the map. You cannot move across sandbars. Lines of tan sand separating two spaces. Remember, your tailwind action lets you move directly to distant, non-adjacent spaces, ignoring sandbars and everything else between. Each time you move a space, do this in order. 1. If you move off the map, you explore, letting you draw and place a new region tile. 2. If the space has enemy figures, you battle them if either of you has loaded cannons. 3. If the space has wreckage or strong current terrains, resolve it. 
We'll talk about terrains in a little bit. After moving a space, if you choose not to move another space or cannot move another space, you anchor. If the space has harbor or treasure terrain, resolve it. Battling and exploring make you lose any remaining spaces of movement in your action. You can only start a new action once you have anchored. Example, you place a four die on your tailwind, letting you move directly to any space with a four die printed in the corner. You jump over the sandbar into a space with an enemy figure, which starts a battle since you have loaded cannons. After the battle, you place a die on sail. You move off the map so you explore a new region. Sail lets you move up to two spaces, but you lose your second move because you explored. Exploring. Whenever you move one of your figures off the map, you explore a new region. 1. Draw region. Draw a region tile from the tile stack. 2. Place region. Place the region tile so that one space is where you are moving to. Pick up your figure and put it back down on that space. 3. Place wealth die. Place a wealth die showing 1 on the center of the region. There must be enough room. You cannot move off the map to explore if there isn't enough room to place the region without overlapping with another or if the tile stack is empty. Example, you can place the new region offset, so only one of its spaces touch the region you moved from. Exploring can create parts of the map that cannot be moved into or explored. You can rotate the region, but you cannot place its island adjacent to any other island. They can be diagonal. After exploring, you cannot move your figure any more spaces with your current action. If you're on strong currents terrain, it still moves you before you anchor. Battling. Whenever you move one of your figures, check if you have loaded cannons. Usually, this means you have a die on cannons, but some figures always have loaded cannons. If you do, your figure must battle every enemy figure in its space. If you do not, you must battle every enemy figure there that has loaded cannons. Do not battle if no one there, including you, has loaded cannons. You must battle these enemy figures one by one in any order. 1. Choose a defender. Choose one eligible enemy figure there. You are the attacker, they are the defender. 2. Attacker fires cannons. You may turn your die on cannons to lower its value by any amount, not below 1. This adds to your battle die roll in step 4. Defenders fire cannons. The defender may lower their cannons value, as in step 2. 4. Roll battle dice. Each player rolls one battle die and adds the amount that they reduce their own die on cannons. The player with the higher total is the winner. On a tie, the attacker wins. 5. Resolve Victory The winner may resolve one battle victory option listed on their player board. After battling, you cannot move your figure any more spaces with your current action. Some things in this game can place figures in spaces with enemy figures. This does not trigger battle since the figure didn't move into the space. Example, you want to battle in your flagship space, so you move out and back in. You have loaded cannons, so you can battle each enemy figure there one by one. First, you battle the smuggler's flagship. You lower your cannons from 4 to 1. They have no die on cannons. You roll a 2 and add your plus 3 from cannons for a total of 5. They roll a 5, but you win the tie because you are the attacker. For your battle victory, you deal 1 damage and steal 1 gold from the smuggler. You place the damage token on their full sail. Now you must battle the squadron patrol, which basically works the same way, though you won't be able to lower your cannons. Terrain. Each space of a region can have terrain. Strong currents. This is symbolized by arrows in the water. When any of your figures move here, you must move it to the adjacent space in the direction shown for free. Don't spend movement move before anchoring, this can make you explore or battle. Harbor, symbolized by an anchor. When your flagship anchors here, you may repair two damage. 
or you may take any die that you have already placed and place it on your cannon's die slot. The squadron may only place a five or six die. Fog, symbolized by fog. Battles cannot happen here. Tailwind, you can move here directly, ignoring everything between, by placing a matching die on your tailwind action. Some fog and other spaces have tailwind. Sandbar, symbolized by a yellow line. You cannot move across this edge. Your tailwind action and some crew let you ignore sandbars. Wreckage, symbolized by a pile of wreckage. When any figure moves here, it must take one damage. Treasure, symbolized by gold coins. When your flagship anchors here, you may gain one gold for each gold icon shown in the corner of the space. All wreckage and some other spaces have treasure. Island, symbolized by an island and one of the suit icons. As an action, while your flagship is here, you may recruit crew from the market. Each faction can also do unique actions here. For example, the smugglers can smuggle and deliver cargo here, as described later. Just like when battling, when a figure is placed on strong currents, harbor, wreckage, or treasure terrain, don't trigger it, because the figure didn't move or anchor there. Example, you sail and move two spaces, each with a wreckage. You take two damage, but only gain one gold when you anchor at the second wreckage. You sail and move two spaces. The strong currents move you one more space. You anchor at the harbor, so you repair two damage. Damage. Whenever your flagship is damaged, a damage token is placed onto an empty die slot of your player board or crew. Wreckage terrain and some crew make your flagship take damage. In this case, you choose which die slot of your own to damage. Victory in battle and some crew let you deal damage. In this case, you choose which die slot of your enemy to damage. Whenever you repair damage, remove a damage token from any damaged die slot on your player board or crew, returning it to the supply. A die slot cannot be damaged if it already has a damage token or a die on it, or if it has a dash box around it, such as the repair slot. If no slots can be damaged, ignore the damage. When a squadron patrol or stronghold is damaged, it is removed rather than a damage token being placed. When the Union's cutter or gunship is damaged, the damage token goes onto the ship's card rather than the Union player's board. Crew. As an action, while your flagship is at an island, you may recruit any number of cards from the market into your crew as long as the crew's suit matches the island. To recruit crew, you must pay the cost shown under its suit. It either requires you to place a die on the card or spend one or two gold back to the supply. You can have any number of crew. When you recruit crew, tuck the bottom of the card under your player board to cover its cargo. Then draw a market card to refill the market unless the market deck is empty. Some crew gives a new action, which may require placing a die. Other crew gives a passive power that you can use at any time it says. Remember, you only get to place two dice in total on your turn, including dice you play to recruit or use crew. Recruiting crew with a gold cost doesn't require placing a die. Example, looking at the crew card, the top left corner is the suit of the crew. Underneath that is a slot for a die. In yellow is the crew for any faction. In green is the cargo for the smuggler only. You place a die on sail to move your flagship and anchor at Skull Island. You recruit the gunner by placing a die to pay its cost. This is the last die you can place this turn. The Bluefin Squadron. Patrols. Placing. Whenever you take the sail or tailwind action, you may place one patrol from your supply into your flagship space when you anchor. Do not trigger battle or terrain. Damaging. Whenever a patrol is damaged, even from moving into wreckage, return the patrol to your supply instead of placing a damage token. 
The trolls battle just like your flagship does. You or an enemy must move in, and one of you must have loaded cannons. You can still lower your cannon's die to add to your roll. Strongholds. Placing. At the end of your turn, any number of times, you may remove two patrols from an island to place a stronghold there. You may have multiple strongholds on an island. Battling. They always have loaded cannons. Strongholds start battle as if you had a die on your cannon slot, even if you do not. In this battle, add plus two to your roll. You can still lower your cannon's die. Damaging. Whenever a stronghold is damaged, return the stronghold to your supply instead of placing a damaged token. Island Dominance. You may recruit crew of matching suit from any islands with a stronghold, as if your flagship were there. Also, while an enemy's flagship is at an island with a stronghold, they cannot recruit crew or smuggle or deliver cargo. The Mollusk Union can still place comrades. Smugglers cannot recruit crew even if they gain a reward. Fifth die. You have five dice. On your first and second turn, you place two dice. On your third turn, you place one die. If you're last in turn order, take your third turn right after your second turn. Standard actions. Sail. Place any die. Move your flagship one or two spaces. When your flagship anchors, you may place a patrol in your flagship space. This is the standard sail, but it lets you place a patrol when anchoring. Tailwind. Place any die. You may move your flagship as described in common actions. When your flagship anchors, you may place a patrol in your flagship's space. This is the standard tailwind, but it lets you place a patrol when anchoring. Cannons. Place a 5 or 6 die. You now have loaded cannons as described in battling. This is the standard cannons, but it can hold up to two dice at a time. In battle, you may only reduce one die on cannons to add to your roll. Repair. Place a two die. Remove up to two damage from any of your die slots. Unique actions. Bombard. Place a four die. Remove all comrades from the island in your flagship's region, returning them to the Union supply. Comrades are Mollusk Union pieces. Order. Place a three die. Move up to four different patrols, each one space. They can explore and battle, which won't end the movement of patrols that haven't moved yet. Deploy. Place any die. Place one patrol in your flagship space or an adjacent space. You cannot place it diagonally. Ignore battle and all terrain, including sandbars. Battle victory. When you win a battle, you may choose one of the following options. One, deal one damage and steal one gold from the defeated player. Two, deal two damage. Three, Mollusk Union ship. Deal one damage and remove one comrade from the island in the region of battle. The Mollusk Union. Comrades. Gaining. Your sail and rally actions let you take comrade tokens from your supply and place them onto the ready comrade section of your player board. You can have any number. Placing. Your sail, inspire, and assemble actions let you take ready comrades and place them on islands. Comrades on islands, but not ready comrades, each add plus one control. Removing. Removed comrades are returned to your supply, not your ready comrades. Battling. Comrades are tokens, so they cannot battle or be battled. Plans. Drawing. You start the game with two plan cards in your hand. After cleaning up at the end of each round, you draw two plan cards into your hand unless your plan deck is empty. You can hold any number of plans in your hand. Playing. You may play plan cards at any time they list at the top, as an action or at the start of any battle. When you play it, resolve it, and discard it face up into a discard pile. If you play your cutter or gunship plan, place it near you instead. Discussing. You may talk, and lie, about plans in your hand, but you cannot show them to other players. Cutter and gunship. Placing. If you play the cutter or gunship plan, remove two comrades from any one island 
to place the ship's figure there. Do not battle. Die slots. The cutter and gunship plan have die slots that let the ship either sail or tailwind, ignoring wreckage. The cutter's sail lets it move one to three spaces, not one to two. Damaging. When the cutter or gunship is damaged, the damage is placed on an empty die slot on the ship's plan. This damage cannot be repaired. When all of its die slots are all damaged, discard its plan and remove its figure. Remember, full die slots cannot be damaged. If the cutter or gunship is in a risky spot, place a die on it to stop it from being destroyed this turn. They're fragile, but hard to hit. Gunship battling. It always has loaded cannons. The gunship starts battles as if you had a die on your cannon slot, even if you do not. In this battle, add plus three to your roll. You can still lower your die on cannons to add more. Cutter battling. It cannot load cannons. The cutter cannot use your die on cannons to start battles, and you cannot lower your die on cannons in battles to add to its rolls. It only battles enemies who have loaded cannons, including strongholds. The Mighty Claw. In addition to adding plus one control, the cutter doubles the control of all comrades on the island in its region. Each comrade adds plus two control instead of plus one. Seeing the claw, a symbol of the union, inspires your comrades to take back what's theirs. Standard actions. Sail. Place any die. Move your flagship one or two spaces. If you anchor at an island, you may either place two comrades on the island or gain two ready comrades. This is the standard sail, but it lets you place and gain comrades when anchoring. You can have any number on the island and in your ready comrades. Tailwind. Place any die. You may move your flagship as described in common actions. Tailwind doesn't let you gain or place comrades because no islands have a tailwind. Cannons. Place any die. You now have loaded cannons as described in battling. Repair. Place an even die. Remove up to two damage from any of your die slots. Unique actions. Inspire. Place a six die. Place one comrade each on up to four different islands. If there are fewer than four islands, you may only place as many comrades as there are islands. Assemble. Place a one die. Place four comrades on an island in your flagship's region. Rally. Place a six die. If your flagship is at an island, gain four ready comrades. Battle victory. When you win a battle, you may choose one of the following options. One, deal one damage and place one comrade on the island in the region of battle. This comes from ready comrades regardless of which of your ships is battling. Two, deal one damage and steal one gold from the defeated player. The smugglers. Cargo. As a smuggler, you have two unique actions that do not require placing dice. While your flagship is at an island, you may smuggle and deliver any number of cargo. To smuggle cargo, take a card from the market whose suit matches your island's suit. Unlike recruiting, smuggling has no cost. Tuck it into the cargo slot on your player board so it only shows the cargo at the bottom. Then draw a market card to refill the market unless the market deck is empty. Example, your flagship is at a fish island. You could recruit the diver into your crew by spending one gold, but instead you put its jewelry into your cargo for free. You may have up to two cargo. If you ever have more than two cargo, you must return cargo to the box until you have two cargo. Cast it into the sea. To deliver cargo, your flagship must be at an island whose suit matches the cargo's deliver suit shown at the bottom of the card. When you deliver, do these steps. 1. Gain 2 fame. Gain 2 fame. 2. Increase wealth. Increase the wealth die on your flagship's region by 1. 3. Gain reward. On your player board, move your white reward marker on the rewards grid to an adjacent space except the one with the black reward marker. You may gain the reward in the space with the white reward marker. 
Then move the black reward marker to the space that the white reward marker moved out of. Four, pledge cargo. Place the delivered cargo card face down under either your squadron or union pledge marker, keeping the pledge marker face down. Example, at a sword island, you deliver jewelry, gain two fame, and turn your region's wealth die from two up to three. As your reward, you could gain one gold, gain one fame, or add a new region tile to any explorable map edge. But you choose to recruit a card from the market into your crew, ignoring its cost and suit. This is your first reward of the game, so you simply move your white reward marker to recruit one crew. Finally, you put the jewelry face down under your union pledge marker, which is also face down. Pledged Cargo. At the end of the game, you reveal your squadron and union pledged markers and then deliver cargo under them. For each cargo, you gain one fame for each region that the pledged faction controls, whose island matches the cargo's top left suit. Example, it's the end of the game. You reveal both of your pledged markers and the cargo under them that you had delivered. No delivered cargo is pledged to the squadron. Two delivered cargo of fish suit are pledged to the Union. The Union controls two regions with fish islands, so you gain four fame. Standard actions. Sail. Place any die. Move your flagship one or two spaces. Tailwind. Place any die. You may move your flagship as described in common actions. Cannons. Place any die. You now have loaded cannons as described in battling. Repair. Place an even die. Remove up to two damage from any of your die slots. Unique actions. Full sail. Place any die. Move your flagship a number of spaces up to the value of the die you placed, but at least one space. So placing a six die now lets you move up to six spaces. Negotiate. Place an even die. While your flagship is at an island, you may recruit any card from the market into your crew, ignoring its cost and suit requirements. You may recruit one or more crew, as described, if you choose to remove one comrade from the island. You cannot recruit more than twice in total. You cannot recruit again if the island has no comrades. And you cannot remove the comrade if the market is empty. Battle victory. When you win a battle, you may choose one of the following options. 1. Deal 1 damage and move 1 or 2 spaces immediately, ignoring all other battles in your space. 2. Deal 1 damage and gain a reward, exactly as in step 3 of delivering cargo. The fine print. Piece limits. All pieces are limited by the contents of the box except for damage tokens. If you are prompted to place a piece from a supply, but its supply is empty, do not place the piece. Rules Hierarchy Crew and plan cards supersede the core rules. Rules that say cannot are absolute and cannot be superseded unless a rule explicitly supersedes it with the ignore keyword. Sidebars, text written in italics and parentheses, like this, and text on the player boards are clarifications and reminders, which are superseded by the core rules they reference. Die values. A die cannot increase over six, decrease below one, or wrap from one to six or reverse. Die values are public. Simultaneous timings. If two things happen at the same time, the player taking their turn chooses the order. Effectless actions. You can do things with no outcome, such as spending two gold to decrease or increase a die, conceding with two players. With two players, the winner might be clear before the game ends. Conceding is totally okay. Appendix A, Crew. Aeronauts, action. While your flagship is at an island, you may spend one gold to move your flagship directly to the other island of that suit. Ignore everything between not a tailwind action. Barrel Man. When your flagship moves into fog, you may treat it as a strong current going in any direction. Battering Beakhead. When you damage an enemy figure, 
unless it would be removed, you may move it one space. It cannot move off map and ignores strong currents that make it do so. It ignores battles, harbors, and treasures. Buccaneer. When you win any battle, you may return Buccaneer to the box to return two crew of theirs that you choose to the box. Convincing Comrade. Action. Place any die. Take up to two comrades from any one island and place them on another island. There are two convincing comrades. Convincing Official. Action. Place a die. Move up to two patrols, each one or two spaces. They ignore battle. There are two convincing officials. Cut purse. When you win any battle, not just with your flagship, gain two gold. Diver. When your flagship anchors at wreckage, gain one more gold from its treasure. Documentarian. At the end of your turn, gain one gold if your flagship is in the same region as an enemy flagship. Don't gain more gold with more enemy flagships. Elder. At the end of your turn, gain one gold if you have no damage die slots, even crew. Emissary. If you would battle as the attacker, you may give the defender one gold to ignore the battle. Fighters. In any battle, not just with your flagship, you add plus one to your roll. Ghastly Gust. Action. Return Ghastly Gust to the box to move your flagship directly to any space. Ignore everything between not a tailwind action. Grogmaster. Once per battle. After you roll, you may take one damage to re-roll your battle dice. If you're rolling two battle dice, re-roll them both. You must be able to place the damage. Gunner. When you win a battle with your flagship, deal an extra damage. Gunner's Mate. When you place a die on cannons, even with a harbor, your flagship may battle against any space on its region as if it moved there. Merchant. When your flagship anchors at a harbor, not island, gain one gold. Middleman. When you spend gold to change a die value, change it by up to two per gold spent. Mystic. Action. Once per turn, take one damage to deal one damage to any figure in your flagship's region. You must be able to place the damage. Naive Noble. Action. Return Naive Noble to the box to take one crew or cargo from a flagship in your flagship's region, making it crew or cargo. You may swap it from cargo to crew or from crew to cargo. Pilot. When your flagship moves into wreckage, you may ignore its damage. Powder Monkey. When you repair any amount of damage, you may deal one damage to any figure in your flagship's region. Sailor. Action. Place any die. Move your flagship one to three spaces, not a sail action. Sea Dog. When your flagship moves into a strong current, you may ignore its effect or move in a different direction. Sea Witch. When your flagship moves off the map, even if you cannot explore, you may move it directly to the space on the nearest opposite edge for free. Example. For the Sea Witch, you trace back from the direction you're moving until you hit the nearest opposite edge. Move to the space adjacent to that edge along the traced path. Shipwright. Action. Place any die. Remove all damage from your die slots. Trawler. Action. Place any die. Move your flagship one or two spaces. You may gain treasure gold even if you don't anchor at it. Not a sail action. Whispering Wind. Action. Once per turn, spend two gold to move your flagship directly to any space with tailwind terrain. Ignore everything between, not a tailwind action. Appendix A does list the suit of each card. Appendix B, plans. The cutter and gunship were already reviewed in the Mollusk Union section. Close call, play at the start of a battle with you, even outside your turn, then discard. Ignore the battle. If it's your turn, you can keep moving if you have movement left. Dynamic Entry. There are two dynamic entry cards in the deck. Increase your die on cannons by two, not above six. Then you may move your flagship directly to any space with tailwind terrain. Enlist. Play as an action, then discard. Choose any one island with any comrades. Recruit any number of crew of its suit, ignoring cost. 
Refill the market only when done. Evacuation. Play as an action, then discard. Remove all comrades from one island and place them on any other island or islands. You may distribute them any way you want. Secret weapon. Play at the start of a battle with you, even outside your turn, then discard. Instead of rolling one battle die, you roll two battle dice and add them up. Your enemy still rolls one battle die. If you win, deal an extra damage. Sneak attack. There are two sneak attack cards in the deck. Play as an action, then discard. Remove up to two patrols from any one region whose island has any comrades. Return the patrols to the squadron supply. Weapons cache. There are two weapons cache in the deck. Play at the start of a battle with you, even outside your turn. Then discard. Increase your roll by the number of your ready comrades. You may play both weapon cache plans and the secret weapon plan. And that is the rule book. Now I'm going to bring on Luke, who has been a kind of regular on Garrick Samples games, uh, because he knows a lot more about this game than I do. So welcome, Luke, to being the first guest on Reading Rulebooks. This is new for me. Woo! I'm excited. This will be a good time. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Let's start with some highlights and lowlights about Ahoy. Tell okay. me all that you know. So some highlights for Ahoy. So things I like about Ahoy. I personally love that Ahoy is a smaller box game. Um, if you compare it to Leader Games' catalog of Root and Oath uh, and Vast, which are slightly bigger games, a little chunkier, uh, Hoy is very nice because it is thinner. Uh, it's easier to, if you want to store it in your, uh, just like a storage solution, or just bring it to a bar. Uh, I do, a lot of times, uh, I when I look at games, what I want to get, I look at games that I can take to a brewery with my wife. And so we can go play a game on a little small table, have a drink and have a good time. Uh, and Ahoy does that very well. It's a great uh, beer and pretzel sort of game. So uh, one num one highlight there. Uh, another part of Ahoy that I also is really nice is it's a little bit cheaper in their catalog. It's uh, $40, <laughs> which is <laughs> in this economy, you know, we all are we all happy to have a little bit of cheaper of a game <laughs> to buy into. So um, can't argue with that. So it's if you have not gotten into the whole asymmetrical uh, world of leader games, uh, it's it is nice. It is nice to have something that is $40 kind of self-contained at this moment of the recording <laughs> and, um, and so it, that to me is very nice uh it was impressive that they could get it a little bit at that price um i'm guessing that was a little bit more expensive due to a little bit of some of the wood but like it is nice to have wood components i mean we're all like we're all suckers for it so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then overall i mean it's it is quicker than something like root or oath um I think normally when we play three players, it's maybe about an hour. Four, four players, it's about an hour and a half. So not too bad. Not the longest huh? game ever. So that's been that's been good. Now it depends on how like hardcore you are. So you know you always know <laughs> those those uh, numbers uh, for the minutes can lie to you very much. So. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Is there anything just in like a general sense that you'd be like, this is kind of a negative for me? I will say. That while I said the length isn't that long, it does seem to go maybe a turn too long, where you okay. feel like, okay, like we're at the like we're at the break point, and then it's like we got another turn where we're like, uh oh, we kind of like know what's gonna happen, <laughs> like okay. we kind of know so where like it's going. There's a lot of games where like you build your engine and they cut you off right as the engine's built, and then this one like just goes that one extra turn to let yes. you like, execute the engine kind of yes. feel. Yes, yeah, and. And sometimes that extra turn is needed. Sometimes it is. But I'd say overall, there's been quite a few times where I'm like, you know, maybe if it was like slightly tuned down to like the end game scoring or maybe like the points were tuned up just a little bit, it'd be like, OK, right then and there. Um, mm. But yeah, so I'd say that's one. Um, I think the other is the, that at three players, it is very hard when you're. The smuggler at three is a hard faction to counter <laughs> because they are mm -hmm. just running around. They're doing their thing uh, and they are scored a lot of points. And due to how the game works, you're not like you don't interact with them as the two major factions as much as something like Root does. Where like those factions were all in the base game were all designed to be like play off each other. 
Uh, and it was like, oh, I slot the Woodland Alliance in. Well, it's like, oh, this is a reason why the Woodland Alliance does this stuff to the cats, does this stuff to the Eerie. Oh, we do these things back. Ahoy is so, not like that exactly. <laughs> well, would you say that the smugglers are kind of similar to like the vagabond, where they're just like doing their own thing and hitting them isn't really good for you? Yeah, they're they're definitely the vagabond role, not the Woodland Alliance role in that sense. So it's like you've got your 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 bluefin squadron, your mollusk union. Those are your big mm-hmm. like your ear, your cats. While the smugglers, it's like you're skipping that next step of like that still has a force, but they're like insurgent. You're just really that pawn running around, which I mean, they are a pawn. They're that's they've got one ship. They're running around. They're doing their thing, and mm-hmm. it's it's fun to hit them, obviously. But like, and there are times <laughs> where because they do have less health, they do have less health on their board because of how many slots they have. But mm-hmm. sometimes it can just be it's really challenging. To be like, oh, I'm gonna go hit them when I am like trying to control all these different islands and try to hold these regions to get the points I need and everything like that. And, and I do think the other thing is, is that if you don't hit them soon enough, they might still be slightly behind, but they could score a ton of points off their pledges. (laughs) A lot of points come out of the pledges, uh, which gives them a lot of end game burst potential that like, if they're consistently scoring, you're like, uh oh, this this isn't good. I don't I don't want you to be able to do the thing. So that's yeah. I'd say with that with the smuggler. That's it's a little hard at three. I'd say. Um, okay. With the direct interaction of both of them at four, it is nice. They do a good job of like fighting Keeping against each, each other, other in check. Yeah, because it's like okay that little market of like oh I'm trying to pull the cars. I'm trying to bring them like grab the different uh, crew and stuff or grab the different. Um, the what i need to actually get uh the resources out there and everything like that it's they do a good job of balancing each other but otherwise the three it's like oh they can just grab all the different cards they want and keep running through it so <laughs> we kind of touched on three player and four player what are your thoughts on two player i'd say overall i like it i it definitely works better out of the box than something like root um it, okay they the mollusks versus the bluefins are just they're they're much more designed to play off each other. You've got your your bluefin squadron who is just like, okay, I am controlling the seas with a horde of little of my little patrols. I'm running around, I'm doing all these doing all this stuff, trying to be scary. And the the mollusks are uh very much like I'm going to uh appear everywhere with my with all my comrades. I'm gonna uh run around with my if I can get the ships with my plans, I get to do that. So they, they're really, it's cool to see the interaction so far in my games. It sometimes seems that if the Mollus player rolls hot, <laughs> the Bluefin squadron has a, a hard time beating them. Uh, and when I say mm-hmm. rolling hot for them, it's mostly rolling their sixes uh, to be able to activate their, mo- at least in my opinion, uh, their most powerful abilities, which are Inspire and Rally. So getting the ability to okay. put comrades out on different islands or also gaining four comrades to kind of do that synergy. So those are like, if they hit off, if they get those really powerful abilities like consistently, you're like, oh boy this this could be really bad (laughs) so yeah so when i was kind of reading through the rule book i noticed with mollusk union like getting rid of comrades seems a little difficult it is it's now i will say if you really want to get rid of comrades consistently uh you Mm -hmm. really want to have um the the ports is that the other they're called uh, or sorry harbors sorry harbors i got harbors yeah you want the harbors because when you land at a harbor you can either repair two damage or you can move any die you've placed to your cannons why that's important with the the um the bluefin squadron is that you have two cannon slots so you Mm -hmm. can if you have to have gold to be able to do this but you move to to a harbor yes then you take that bombard die you just place to kill the comrades, you move it over the cannons by spending a pip, like you pip it up with the gold, <laughs> you put it in the cannons, mm-hmm. hey look, you can bombard again, and then you can just keep doing that as much as possible. That is... I see, so bombard's like the key way. It is the key way. comrades. Yep, you really okay. want to be able to bombard, and so having multiple harbors, hopefully in the area, so like when you, and I know we're going to talk about the map later on, but it's one of those things where when you are revealing the map tiles and you're looking at them, Thinking about, oh, if I see a harbor and I get to place it, thinking about, okay, 
this harbor is within like a two space area that I can run to it and then go blow something else up. It's a big part of like your strategy as the blue fins to be like, okay, I'm just going to start just removing all of these. So. One thing I was kind of curious how you feel about the blue fin squadron was that fifth die that feels really powerful. It is super is nice. It? it well, to be honest, it is. And it isn't, it is. Okay. The re so what I say it isn't is that you need it. Like it is very much part of the bluefin to like do to be to stay in the game, to do the actions that they need to do to keep up with the moss. Because the moss have all those plans, those plans can highly swing the game if they're used right. Oh and, yeah. Okay. But it is also really powerful because depending on the like the turn order and everything, especially like in two players, it's like you might have like three actions without anyone responding to it and and it, it's mm -hmm. it's very much a game where like being able to like because you take your two turn you take your two actions like you buy a place in your two dice and then your next person goes being able to do three uninterrupted actions is very nice or even having that last like slot like that last die to at the very end of a, of a round to be able to go like take us a, a region that's really heavily invested and win that tiebreaker because the flagship has the extra flags is very, very nice. It's very, very powerful. So I definitely think it's like, I think it's needed. I think it's very much needed for the bluefins to stay. There's gonna be times where, yeah, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, how dare you have this extra die? And like, you're, how dare you do this to me? <laughs> but overall, it's, I, I would very much see that like, because of how the faction works, if they didn't have that, they could quickly run out and if you think about them kind of in comparison to roots cats like one of the you things like that comparing things to root i, I feel bad for any um, i apologize to anybody <laughs> who does not know root that is listening yes if you don't know root you should check out the garrick samples game root winter tournament you should be why our heads are so heavily in root right now but anyway sorry so yeah i guess <laughs> to give a brief synopsis so that people who are have just if they're just jumping in they haven't played root ever the cats are the like Oh, area don't, control don't <laughs> so yeah. it's like we don't need to go into another right, game too no, we got we, already, to, we already got one yeah we don't have to go to the full name <laughs> but they control a lot of the area and so the bluefins kind of mimic that um okay. and the nice thing with the bluefins in comparison is that they have more actions consistently so they don't run up to the boundaries that some that the cats do so it's very nice okay it's very fun <laughs> so one thing I was kind of curious about, like, reading this, especially with the Bluefin Squadron and Mollusk Union being so area control heavy, is is there a lot of battling? Or is that more, or is it more exploring? Because I know the map is not, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, I mean, you're constructing the map. You're, you're constructing you're, it, yeah. It's it's similar to a game like uh, Betrayal at the House on the Hill, or there's, like, other, that's, in my mind, the first one that comes up where you you build out the board. The board changes right. because you have these tiles you place. And especially yeah, at the beginning, at least, for me, that's a lot of exploring. Maybe not okay. as much fighting. It's much more exploring. Especially because fighting only happens when you throw a die into cannons. Like, you don't have to to fight it's very different than other maybe if you could think about war games where you're like if i put my piece with your piece we are instantly we fighting fight <laughs> or we right. have like a phase later that we're gonna fight so i think that what's cool about ahoy in that instance is that you have to i mean to place a die into the cans unless you go to a harbor is an action and you mm -hmm. only have a limited amount of actions. And I mean, if you're not able to utilize that cannons in the round that you're doing, like you're fighting and everything, like it's a wasted die. It's like a whole wasted ability for what you're doing with it. So having, so it's a, it's a lot more strategic. You're not just like, oh, I'm going to go fight people. I'm just going to go do like, I'm just going to go But I want to go fight people. You do. And so you have to think about, <laughs> you really have to think, oh, I'm going to, I am putting this, like this dying cannons and I am going to go fight someone. Like, this is what I am doing. I am going to gotcha. turn on the, and I mean, I think that it's, it's easier for the two area control factions to fight. I mean, you have with the blue fins that when they put a dying cannons, all their patrols are active. So those are always going to, like, if you get into the, one of their those spaces, fight. they're yeah. fighting. Uh, the strongholds are always fighting. Uh, I'd say the Moss Union gets fightier once their ships go out and they get, mm -hmm. or, or, yeah. And so it's just like the more ships are out there, the 
especially when you have the gunship out, the gunship always fights. <laughs> so it's like, oh, right. there's instead of just having this one location with the flagship that's fighting, it's like, oh, no, no, we have another location, so we're getting more fighting to go down. So, so it cascades a little bit. It cascades. And so you're going to have games where there's fighting and then you're going to have games where there's less. It just it just depends on how the board kind of sets up. And so. so kind of going back a little bit to the map, with it being so modular, does that enhance the game? Does it take away from it? Is it strategic? Like, what do you f- feel I think about it's, that? I actually personally, I really enjoy that part of it. It's actually, I think, a big plus to the game. I think if it was a... St- if the map was something like just a normal board game where it's just like, this is the map you're running around on, on spaces. They, even if it was just like, even if it was like a map where the islands could change, like you, like you could throw out new islands or things like that. The ability to build the map means that in regards to replayability, there's a ton <laughs> because it's not going to look the same unless you very much choose to make the similar looking map. Um, it's also fun because you always will have one of the uh, the suits disappear, um, like or like not completely disappear, but ha- one of them will ha- be lacking one of their other islands, their sister islands. So it's kind of nice to that you don't have like you're like oh which one is the which is the one where it's like this is the only suited island of this, and I have to go here to get what I need to get done. So do all uh, suits have two islands in the game? Is that just like yes. the base for the board? Yep. Okay. Yep. All have two. Um, and also, if you this might be revealing too much, but if you actually look at the islands, uh, if you look at the suit, you if you look at the actual island art, mm-hmm. uh, they they match in a way. So like the skull island, one of them looks like a skull. I think the other one looks like just it looks like a, a dog bone. Um, <laughs> you've got the swords. One has a shield. The other one's like a cutlass. I think uh, the uh, compass. One is north. One is south. So if you actually look at the island <laughs> like itself in the artwork, <laughs> it actually matches with the suit. That's are. pretty so cool. Fun. But yeah, no, so they all have two, um, so that changes it up. Um, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about the crew here in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I want to talk to the crew next, and, so. <laughs> uh, one of the things that, and we, this might segue very nice, and it, it kind of goes back to maybe a, a bad thing about um, Ahoy, is that some of the most powerful crew are in one specific suit, and that is the palm trees. <laughs> really? I and was so, not expecting palm tree to be the most powerful suit, I'm not going to lie. I thought it would be it either like the skull good. suit or the um, the sword suit, but yeah, no, palm, the tree. palm tree. Okay, is very good, and so I'll explain why. So there's two very specific uh, cards that um, there's only three cards in palm so, tree. So yes, there's only three cards in palm tree. So it's two <laughs> out of the three that are like super good. You've got your convincing official and your convincing comrade. And there's two so of each of those. The, okay. Yes, convincing official lets you move two patrols. Uh, each one or two spaces, mm-hmm. uh, they ignore battle. Mm-hmm. And the convincing comrade lets you take up to two comrades from any one island and place them on another island. And why those are so powerful, it's you get to manipulate other people's pieces um, or your own, depending on if you get it for yourself. Um, and when you, like, especially with the patrols, depending on how the map is laid out, if there are um, wreckage, <laughs> those patrols die instantly. So it can be really rough as the, the Bluefin Squadron if your patrols are just getting pipped apart because they just keep playing the convincing official and you just keep losing every single patrol that you have out there okay. on the, on the, in, the, in the map. Uh, so definitely challenging. Uh, convincing Comrade, I would say, is a little less powerful than the official. Um, well, but you could but just put can, more comrades on one island and bombard it. So that yes, seems pretty brutal yes. too. It is very brutal because it can it can be devastating, especially if you're getting like a really good like you have like a harbor, you're able to bombard multiple times. You're like, I am going to just keep moving these like comrades here and just kill them all. And so it can be very rough. So, but kind of back to what we said before, as you can tell. Both of these are for the control factions, and so none of these, these two that are so powerful, they aren't really against the smuggler. Which is Um. actually kind of interesting, because the fifth card in Palm Tree is the Naive Noble, which does, in my mind, attack the smuggler. Because that one, you can take one crew or cargo from a flagship and then make it a crew or cargo for yourself. Yep. So you can steal that cargo, which is really nice. But it is only a one-time use. It is only a one-time use, and that makes it really hard. If you could steal more cargo, if it was like a consistent from, thing, it'd be better. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. That's one of those things where like that's so far, and it's like one of those things where 
I think if you could consistently do it, it's it's also hard because it's like one of the only cards that outside of battle does something to the smugglers like cargo. Mm-hmm. Besides like strongholds and like will stop it that you can actually go there. So there are a couple like ways that you interplay that, but these the palm trees are like if you think about like an island in a suit that's like these are gonna help me manipulate other players. The palm trees are the places to go. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're like, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna use the I'm gonna hopefully we're gonna draw these cards and then I'm going to get some powerful crew to help me, like, get my engine even more powerful. Or to stop it, someone else from ste- hurting my engine. So do you feel like the crew really um, add to the game? Do you see a lot of crew in, in the games that you've played that people will I, accumulate? I do, actually. I'd say one of the, the best, I guess, I didn't say this earlier, but one of the, the nice things about the crew is that they're usually very quick to get. Okay. And so it's not like some other games where if you're getting like a power up, like a tech or things where it takes like a decent amount of time to get that tech. Like you're getting, you if, as soon as it's out there, as long as you have either you're close to that island or you have set up in a way that like you can actually gain those cards, there are certain ways you can kind of cheat those cards out even if you're not like at that island it's really easy to get some cards and you feel very much like the impact of those cards right away where you're like, Oh yeah, I'm using my crew. I'm getting these power ups. I'm, I'm doing some really nice things. And I also like it cause they did a good job with the crew that each suit of the crew is highlighting a different aspect of what it manipulates in the game where like the palm trees are like, they're manipulating the other players, the, with your sword, the, the, like the sword, it's a lot about battling and uh, maybe stealing coins. You're, uh, there it's really nice there's just the the skull and crossbone is all about like fighting and punching people like heavily <laughs> so it's really nice to have like the flavor that comes out with the suits we're like okay like i know what kind of powers i'm getting mm-hmm. um and so and the deck is pr- is smaller um so you see them more consistently yeah. there you're gonna see them throughout a game it looks like there's only um, five cards in each suit so it's about 30 cards in total Yes, and they get smaller in a two-player game because you cut gotcha. out a single card from every single suit. Okay. So, which can be t- or it's two and three-player, which makes that's the another thing. It's kind of hard in the three-player when you could run out of cards in the deck actually kind of quickly if everyone's pulling, everyone's seeing powers. It's very interesting how quickly that deck can get thinned down, <laughs> and so um, it's definitely something to consider when playing it. You're like, oh well, I, we got through all the cards, <laughs> so we're gonna just start fighting. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> I could see how that could really both negatively and positively affect a game where it's kind of like your yeah. attack against the smuggler by getting rid of all of the cards so they don't yes, have any cargo which, to deliver. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I we, we haven't gotten to that point. We've gotten close, but we haven't gotten to that point fully yet where it's like, oh, you can't get anything. But <laughs> the smuggler does it other ways. Just, just go fight. <laughs> and just then they can just go bloody, like, flagship pirate. Go take the seven seas and then win that way so they have ways still so it isn't it isn't totally like it's not like a it's not game ending yeah it's not game ending where you're like oh i'm i've just been removed (laughs) i'm out (laughs) i can't do anything so well it's been really interesting to hear your thoughts on ahoy i um i definitely appreciated the insight because i have not played it very much so (laughs) um is there any other like final thoughts you have that you'd want to share that's your wisdom of it. I think that just in general, I mean, if you're looking for, if you got 40 bucks that you're like, oh, hey, I want to, I want to try out something in the later games catalog. I don't want to, maybe you don't have the money to get root right away. Maybe you're just looking for something lighter. I would say with the, the groups I have that are more casual, Ahoy's done really well with them. So I think that that is, it's something to look at, to consider. It's, it's definitely a fun game. I've jo- definitely enjoyed it. So. It's got a good recommendation. <laughs> so. Very glowing recommendation from Luke. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And that was the Reading Rulebooks episode on Ahoy. If you like what you hear, make sure to check out Makecraft Game on YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you can find me. And of course, always check out makecraftgame.com for more content. I'll catch you next time.